Ha Jun Chang's 23 Things They Don't Tell You About Capitalism Explains Free Market Economics Flaws. More importantly, you will see how we can fix these problems and create a better society for everyone. The 2008 financial crisis is likely recognizable to you. Most finance personnel except bankers had lost their dependability. Even though this negative reaction was unwarranted, it made sense due to these experts' arrogant behavior. When they tried to reach the sun, their wings scorched. They were arrogant because they believed they were the only ones who understood economics. Economists dismissed unfavorable notions because they thought their methods were too simple. However, this was false. However, most of economics is common sense. You know the laws for public health and cleanliness when you dine out even though you're not an expert. The economy's main role can also be understood by everybody. In other words, you don't need to be in control of a country to know that gambling away its wealth is a bad idea. This hubris also led to economic alternatives being dismissed. For a long time, liberalist theory has dominated economics. This theory holds that each person is a tool in the capitalist society seeking the optimal self-serving outcome when they participate in the economy. In economics, this theory is treated as an undeniable fact. Hence, economists focus more on the theoretical side than on how it operates in the real world. However, economics is considered a humanities field. Therefore, using a different technique in economics is not absurd. In the rest of the overview, we'll discuss liberalist economic theory's key flaws. 1997 Nobel Prize winners in economics were Robert Merton and Myron Scholes. Most of their concepts were founded on the idea that people made economic decisions rationally. Myron and Scholes applied their concepts to the physical environment with the confidence this award afforded them. However, they lost all their money in two investments while trying to get rich. This mistake indicates that you can never assume individuals would act logically most of the time. We must evaluate all aspects of something to get a logical conclusion, so it takes time. People must consider every information to make sensible conclusions. When we examine how much thought and research it takes to invest our money and feel comfortable, this becomes even more apparent. Today, this is impossible due to the constant flow of information. In this flood of information, making a reasonable conclusion is difficult. However, we don't always act illogically. Our best efforts to be logical are limited by our intelligence. What should we do to shape our financial choices around this? It's the state's role to govern the economy and set limits. Our financial options will be constrained by the government, therefore they must be good. The authorities also know how to do this. Drug and traffic laws are already their responsibility. Economics can be approached similarly. Ever considered leaving a taxi without paying? That would likely get you away. Despite thinking about it, you never do it. Liberal economy theorists argue that giving the driver his due share was not reasonable, even though it's right, because they think our brains are self-serving and we should do anything we can to avoid paying money. Why don't we follow this belief? Theorists explain it as a hidden payoff from our acts. These concealed losses and profits will have a lasting impact. Thus, we don't avoid paying for our ride to avoid being labelled immoral, which would hurt our reputation and make it difficult to get a ride next time. This doesn't work for self-centred folks. Reconsider the cab case. If we go away, the taxi owner would have to after us to retrieve his money. If successful, he would reveal us as stealers to his colleagues. He would leave his automobile unlocked and in danger while chasing us. If the driver simply considered himself and not his co-workers, he would not feel the need to pursue such a small sum of money at the risk of his car. Thus, we do not avoid paying for our drive out of integrity, virtue or trust. Do you think we deserve what we're worth? Fair? You may want to reconsider this desire if you live in an affluent state. If you got your due, your typical payment may drop. How come? Capitalist blue-collars payments are protected by governments. Thus, regardless of work value, these salaries remain constant. For instance, no matter your job, there will always be foreigners prepared to work for less. Your job is safer with government intervention. This is partly due to third world immigration laws. Thus, your income may be too high. This case also shows that contextual conditions, not ability, determine your income. Even if you're the worst employee in your country, if you're from a rich country, you'll likely make more than the most dedicated employee in a developing country.
workers are paid unfairly in nations too. The upper classes will always earn more than the poorer classes. At the end of the 20th century, administrative workers earn 100 times more than laborers. In recent years, this difference has grown. Does this reflect these employees' value? Doubtful. It's possible they're productively similar. Economically, this income inequality is unfair. What comes to mind when you see an abandoned factory? If you're from an affluent state, you may ponder about the manufacturing sector's decline and mistakenly believe it's over. This sector's data is commonly misinterpreted, causing this error. Although there are fewer personnel in production, this indicates the sector's efficiency. Still, many legislators think underdeveloped areas should switch sectors. However, this would harm the country's finances. Let's explore services. This sector has grown significantly for years. It's still risky to be too dependent on services. Another concern is this branch's inefficiency. The majority of finished products will be in bad shape. For instance, a Macbeth performance that concludes in 30 minutes would be efficient but worthless. So a country dependent on this sector must have a slow-growing economy. We manage economics through information. In the cyber era, this kind of financial monitoring is promising. However, this economy is overrated. Cyberspace has had little impact on information transfer and is not innovative. Faxing technology allowed information to be sent in minutes instead of days when it was originally introduced. Cyberspace's faster communication delivery compared to the telegraph is not as obvious. The 2008 economic meltdown devastated the global economy. After 10 years of financial development, some large corporations were close to collapse. Many of the worst-hit companies, including Age and Leifman Brothers, contributed to their own demise. Economics was too complicated before this catastrophe. The market needed financial derivatives to survive. They were financially helpful at first, but their convoluted tactics hid their significant danger. These derivatives were produced using safer choices like home credits. This practice made investing riskier. Pools of mortgage loans were used to construct new financial derivatives. The danger rose with their number. Imagine building a tall structure on a little lot. Building something that rises would lose stability. Each floor weakened the building. One more issue. Value decreased as financial products increased. Take building. Imagine if each floor had poorer materials. It would not last long, if at all. Even though this crisis touched everyone, it hit free market participants most. As free market countries, Ireland and Latvia lost 7, 5 and 16 percent. Ireland and Latvia, which had opened their markets before the crash, experienced 7.5 percent and 16 percent declines, respectively. Is state intervention in the economy justified? Liberal theorists strongly disagree. They think it will generate chaos. According to these experts, government interference in the economy invariably resembles the Soviets. State control can improve a nation's finances notwithstanding these claims. First, governments know more about the country's finances than private companies. It helps the state identify sectors with growth potential. A good example is South Korea. The state rejected LG's closed industry investment. LG was more profitable in tech, so they drove them there. Furthermore, this applies to all countries. In the IT industry, American affairs supported some early ideas. How did these approaches fail in the Soviet Union? Don't restrict too much. If the government meddles in all financial matters, it will lose control. However, if it behaves like a conductor and sets goals and objectives, it will succeed. A CEO sets a plan and makes sure it's implemented to ensure consistent growth. This is the government's financial policy goal. Experts in first world nations are warning states about their aid to the poor. They argue that unemployed payouts encourage inactivity. Despite experts' claims, these payments improve government's finances. When lower classes receive financial aid, their economies thrive, but when they don't, they struggle. Why? In welfare-free countries, workers want secure jobs. They prefer medical careers since there is no unemployment pay if things go wrong. These professions are necessary, but they don't improve a country's budget. Push people into jobs that may fail but will grow the economy. Countries that follow this course often prosper economically. 
The liberalist trickle-down effect contradicts these aids, which promote financial growth. Financial aid to the poor maintains taxation. If taxes existed, affluent people may have made investments that would benefit the nation. This capital would boost a nation's finances and create new jobs. When implemented, this proposal failed. In the 1980s, this idea halted UK and US economies. Capital did not enter these economies. The wealthiest Americans have doubled their fortune since then. Even though they may not realize it, most powerful people in the industrialized world are unaware of how lower class restrictions affect the world. Despite their self-confidence, they have misperceptions about this problem. Mistaking system failures for economic turmoil in these countries is prevalent. External influences cause systematic difficulties. If so, wouldn't distant locations like Swiss countryside be part of this toil? Another misconception is that disadvantaged nations lack innovation. However, these nations have 40% more self-employment than the West. Thus, this belief is disproven. West nations should solve global poverty. It's true that wealthier nations' economic codes harmed emerging ones. Sub-Saharan Africa was prosperous in the 1970s because it protected its productive sectors from outside forces. Then, developing governments interfered with their economic functions, shaking up the region's finances again. We must remember how the developed world grew wealthy to cease this behavior. The West's market protection caused this. In the U.S. efforts were taken to ensure at least half of the capital was state-owned. Why not poor nations? The wealthiest Americans have doubled their fortune since then. However, liberalist capitalism causes all these mistakes. Capitalism can organize a nation's finances well. Motivators include profit and capital. Entrepreneurship comes from a desire to succeed, resulting in new ideas and reforms. Capitalism organizes economics well. It organizes society's economic participation. Capitalism provides numerous advantages, but misapplication can pose serious problems. Capitalism is like a car. An automobile can be lethal if not used properly. Unfortunately, capitalism is mostly unregulated. Other options exist. We can improve capitalism. Banded rationality, which means limiting alternatives to make excellent decisions, can help. We'd need to give the state more economic power to intervene in big finances' bad financial judgments. Thus, the nation must make safer and smarter economic decisions. If an expert advises liberal financial management, think carefully. We have better choices. To achieve a more equal and livable world, everyone must consider these possibilities. Know that your vote counts. Candidates often promise cheaper taxes. Consider the potential repercussions of this action. If government aid is crucial to you, you may want to switch candidates. 